Jason Rovers or will hold cause a big upset here. Just had a spine tingling tribute to the great Phil Lowe ahead of kickoff. But now it's time for the Super League action to begin. Derby Day here in Hull. Rivals round continues. And it's Hull KR against Hull FC. John Wells, what a tribute that was ahead of kickoff to the great, the legendary Phil Lowe. Yeah, absolutely. I, we, we, we talked about how this was a, a cauldron. Noise, sound, smell, sights and everything else. Well, you could hear a pin drop. Before you, you joined our coverage, there was a uh, some archive footage played out from the, the great man who made over 400 appearances uh, for the Robins back in the day, won every honour in the game and, and, and rightly respected in the, in the best possible manner. Rovers looking to build on a promising start to their campaign. And Jez Litton on his 100th Rovers appearance kicks downfield. McIntosh got that wrong, it will bobble towards the try line. And here comes the chase. And that's a good first set from the Robins. Well, it was a good first set because the bit of indecision there between Texoy and Dan on McIntosh. Hull FC need to, they have to start well in this game. And those sorts of loose moments need to be few and far between if they want to grab any kind of foothold today. Just one win so far for the black and whites. They were nilled on the opening round of the season by the Robins. He's here forward. Oh, big collision goes in there. Bachelor it was who was bounced off. Last one, they're just short of the 40. Smith's going to kick downfield. He's kicking into a strong breeze. That kick just holds up. He's caught in the full. And the Robins have the first advantage. Tackle one outside their own 40. Really, really excited to see how Nile Levels goes today. Start the season on the wing, if you remember. Move to fullback. Petter Hick will revert to the centre. I think as a result, they've got a much more well balanced side. And, and Evels himself. Very, very good run of the football. Developed a really good passing game as well late in his career. Excited to see what they can put together in attack. Yeah, Sue with a big carry. Whitbread is hit hard. Ockham ball that's an offload. It was batted down by Hull. The referee, oh, that's going to be a knock on. Well, that was fairly played at by Hull. They got the ball back, but they couldn't take it in. So the Robins are going to get a real attacking chance here. Yeah, attempted off Hull. Liggy Sowers initially batted it back, but then there's a Hull FC. Hand in there that's uh, that's knocked on, and that's going to be Robin's ball. Mate, you got you got called on the ten meters there. Not as well. the start you need that the black and whites wanted. Not the start that the fans were looking Wait, for. Please, boys. Wait, heads in tight. Arms over. Mikey Lewis. Over. Tech, back after off. that head. Not that ruled him out last week. And here the ball goes to Evans. Move now. Up and square. Hold. Lewis and at dummy half. Hadley. Carries forward against his former team. Great opportunity here. The sunshine in the pitch certainly looks drier than in recent weeks here. There's a ball back on the angle by Whitbread. Good carry from him. Can the Robins find their attacking flow early on here? May ball over the top, but it's over the top of the winger. And into touch. There maybe was an opportunity, but the timing of the pass was not on yeah just overcooked by Tyrone May the idea is right they've got some really good shape really deep but you can see the winger tucked in there and it's just gone over over the head of Burgess Play the ball. but the positions they're taking up in attack the depth and shape they've got you know, that's going to cause that's going to cause issues for that for the edge defenders for Hull FC we know they've not been up to snuff so far this season well, they've had two big defeats coming into this one, but as Willie Peters has said in the build-up, this is a perfect two. chance for the Black and Whites Move. to kick-start their season. Houghton gets it away. Move, straight down it. the middle, the atmosphere was building here, around about three, four hours before the kickoff. Another big collision, nice little offload there from the Black and Whites. Here's New Brown, he's tackled just short of the halfway line. Move. And Danny Houghton oh, no. waits to play the ball. Gets it away to Smith. Smith will get it away to Hoy. Hoy challenges the line, but is brought down. And this will be the last tackle for the black and whites. They won here last season. And Smith goes high. Again, the wind gets hold of that, causing problems at the back. Well taken again by Evels. You just wonder there if the whole player maybe could have played at that ball. Yeah, Lingy Sal got himself in, in the vicinity, didn't he? But Evels has done really well to claim that. 
But again, they're starting early in their tackle count up towards the 40 meter line already. All the pressure you feel on the black and whites and Tony Smith coming into this one. As the ball now works its way to Lewis who finds Hadley. Wrestles his way over the halfway line. Fred, who was impressed following his move from Wakefield in the close season. Nice one. Lewis is going to go to the sky. He will put it up high. Oh, he's got the sun in his eyes here on his own line. Takes it nicely. Evades one, but tackled just outside his own 10. Yeah, another very competitive set from Hull KR. You talked about. Uh, Whitbread is, I think, exactly the sort of recruit they need to bring in. You know, they, they had uh, guys there. Stand you look at um, the likes of uh, Dean Hadley, for example, straight up and down, hard nosed George King. I think you add another one to that. I think that's three. it, really makes Move them a formidable out. outfit. Hold. Got three. Well, they've got to clear their own end of the field and they'll try and do that with Sal. Four. Move tie. Four, yes. Real opportunities. Four, four. For the black and whites to get forward yet. Yeah. Tackle around the legs. Last one, and they're only 30 off their own line. They do get a quick play of the ball. Here's Smith will advance and then kick downfield. That's a decent kick in fairness. He's found the grass. The bounce so kind for the Robins and Burgess, who's played in three of the last four, will bring it forward. And once again. Well, we they're 30 hard. meters or more away from their own line on tackle one. Yeah, and we spoke in the pre-game about the, the size that Hull FC had recruited in Move SASA. Uh, Jack Ashworth Hull and Hull Franklin Hull Pelle. When SASA has taken a fourth Hull carry and just gets chopped down. If they, these guys have got to be over the advantage line and punching holes. They need to be direct, shorten up, and really gain some momentum because they, they cannot continue to kick off the back foot. The check with a good carry. A little bit of a feeling out process early on. May gets it away to Bachelor. Move! Five over halfway. Fifth tackle. Robbins looking to book boot to ball. They're going to go high towards the try line. Hoy's going to let this go. And the win there, you just saw, got behind Lewis' kick. And it was far too deep in the end. Yeah, there is a, a, a south to north breeze, quite considerable breeze. Once it gets above the level of the stand, the ball can really get taken. And it's a seven tackle set as a result, but but crucially against the set defensive line. Twice already this season, the Robins have nilled opponents. Fearsome defense. And all I see have not exactly been ripping up trees with ball in hand, but can they create something here? As they bring the ball forward up the middle, they go. Sue with a tackle. And a veteran. Many a derby gets it away to Ashworth. Not the best pass. It goes behind Sow, who's going to lose ground. Look at the defence there from the Robins on that far side. Burgess quick to seize the opportunity. And all at the moment, you mentioned it, John, they've got no go forward at all. Well, Danny Houghton's getting out, out of the ruck and taking a couple of steps. I mean, he'd be better off just serving an SASA or an Ashworth straight off the deck over that advantage line. It was a better carry, get them back to halfway. Here goes Smith again. Again, he'll go high. Again, the kick will hold on the wind. Again, Evels will come and catch it. Makes it look easy, Evels. Looks at home. So he should. He's played lots and lots of games at fullback. Yeah, and he's a confidence player as well, his nine levels. Gets a couple of early touches. He can really find himself involved in the game. Really fit, as I said before, really well balanced runner, as is Jez Litton, who's been a menace for teams over the last two or three weeks. 18 appearances for Hull, now he's made 100 for Hull KR. As Hull comes forward, he's well met. 40 out from the line. Play the ball for Litton, gets it to Minchella. Minchella for May, they've got numbers here. Evans will slip it away. I think that caught a whole hand and it needed to as well. Otherwise the Robins would have been in. That's twice they've got to that side, John, and twice they've looked threatening. Yeah, they've got such great shape and depth, and it is. It's forcing, it's forcing early movement from the edges. It's, Lewis Martin who gets in, it's the right decision from Martin, he just catches the hand on the way through. He does enough there to disrupt the uh, attacking play, but they'll have to defend another set of six. And that's the danger you've got when you play deep and you've got shape and options. You're, 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 as a, a centre or as a winger, you saw it last night with the Casper Tigers getting pulled out of shape. 
been forced to make decisions and invariably the margin for error there is, is vastly reduced. Lewis ducks under one challenge and he's still going here and eventually Scott will drag him to the turf. Juggled and lost, so Hull's defence forces an error. Here now is McIntosh. Brings it in field, so Robbins come up with the error, Zero. ten minutes in. That was a really good shot from Jordan Lane, got in underneath the ball and dislodged. And that's a better carry from Lingy Sau, he's showing the way forward. Martins. Yes, good second contact there from number 15, Jordan Lane. His SASA tops off Lytton. Tackle just short of halfway, Houghton to Smith. Smith to Brown, here goes Hoy, tries to run it himself. He didn't have options outside in there, but held on to it. Tex Hoy, a fullback for the last two before today, as Houghton scoops out a dummy half, pinches some metres downfield. All here now with Brown. Brown gets it away to Smith, bumps off May. This is the furthest downfield the black and whites have been. What can they... Produce on this last tackle. We'll go to New Brown. He's going to hoist up the kick. Tester got it, got it. at the back. Edmonton Burgess coming for it. Burgess collects it. Great catch, Burgess. Good take from Burgess, but I like the patient play from Hull FC as well. They've been another punt early on, and they've got to complete a set and put a ball in a corner. Short of this defensive line now and apply some pressure. That's what they need to do next. Here's Hall, carries it forward. Brown gets to him, but holds off Brown. And Hall just fall behind Danny Maguire. Quick play of the ball for Lytton. He had support with it. Couldn't find Lewis. But the Robins already looking lively. This may now go straight through the guts. Gets it away to Lewis. Support on his inside for the Robins. First try of Danny Day. And it goes away to the Robins. A 99 Super League try for the Robins. And Robins lead by four points to nil. And it's great work in the build-up from Tyro May. He sees an overread at the base of the run. The marker jumps out. I think he's spooked by the presence of Mikey Lewis on that short side. The gap opens up. He takes a strike through. Sees Mikey Lewis on the other side. And then, like all good fullbacks should, supporting and putting themselves in some space and giving the ball carrier an option. It's a great opening try. Take a look at this. Just that little bit of overread from New Brown. Gets in behind, ball to Mikey Lewis, draws Texoy, who can do very little about that. And Niall Evolts opens the scoring for the Robins on the home patch. It's clever stuff, is that, from Tyrone May. Yeah. We know Mikey Lewis is going to be a, a real target for defensive players, but that's naive from New Brown. He's not taking care of where the threat is. The threat is the ball. You get told that from a very young age. And it's just that little bit of deception. And then Mikey Lewis is into the backfield. And Niall level a guy we've already spoken about, back in his favoured position, Not and he's open the scoring. Jeslett looking to add the extras here then. I'll have you if you need it here, boys. They had some woes, didn't they, on the opening it's round off. at the MKM with a goal kicking, but Jez Litton has done a pretty competent job. And there's a high success probability here. Sends it on the way, no, well, no, we've jinxed him. That was a poor kick from Litton. And it remains the Robins for Old Hill. Yeah, it's the one element of the 2024 season they've not quite got right, is it? A nominated number one goal kicker after the departure of Jordan Abdul. But I'll tell you what, it's a lovely piece of play. Lovely interplay between Coming six, seven way, and one. In. Smart play, intelligent play. Stay behind, boys. The kick, well, that wasn't up to the standard of the uh, of the ball play we've just seen. Everybody makes a lot of noise, don't they, about, about uh, Mikey Lewis, and rightly so, and Jez Litton as well, local lads. But Tyro May, when he was signed from the Catalan Dragons, I, you know, a lot of educated people who, who know a lot about the game said that, that that's a key Whoa. signing, is that? Move down! Yeah. Nice. Like pretty nicely. Go on, go. Robbins looking to build on the first points. Don't forget St. Helens Wigan to come. That follows us here. Rivals round continuing. And that should be a crack. A winner will go top of the Bedford Super League tonight. And now a penalty for the Red and Whites. Yeah, it's a late challenge. After the pass has gone, 
So after Suarez's so it's just contact from Danny Houghton. There's not an awful lot in it. But you can see Suarez Sue hits the deck. Ball carrier or ball passer in a in a vulnerable position. And Michael Lewis has really got hold of that. Wow, what a kick. That is a great touch finder. He's belted that nearly 50 metres downfield. And here come the red and whites again. Dominant! And not on that tackle as Lane quickly turns Whitbread away. Ball here, Minchella decides to run it and he's found a gap. Gets through the line initially. He's still going. 12 out. Robbins looking lively here, looking to double their advantage. As the ball now works its way, here's Sue. Fancies a charge. He's trying to power his way. Hoyt's trying to drag him back. And the big man a metre away. Options and dangers all over. The right hand side looks where all the threats are lining up now. Here's Minchella, turns it back to May. May's going to be tackled by Howell, but doesn't wrap up the ball. Gets it away now. Flicked out, there's a chance on the far side. Bergen for the corner. He's over. Craven Parkey rubs again. Two tries in quick succession. And Hull KR flying here, smiles all round. Burgess three in his last three. Rovers lead by eight. They looked like the play had broken down for a moment. Tyrone May came back in field, but then he found an outlet in nine levels. Who's gone scorer turn provider finds a lovely flick ball in the tackle, and Petter Hicker had the simple task of drawing his defender and releasing Joe Burgess, a close season signing from the Salford Red Devils. Remember, and they cross again in the corner. And the foul play is what triggered all this and it was innocuous and this is the thing small small actions can have big consequences and talking about big what about that from the boot of Mikey Lewis and once they get into the, the set second third play looks at this point like the play had broken down a little bit May finds Evels take a look at this from my levels beautiful ball fend on Sutcliffe ball release catch and pass by Hiku and then Burgess dots down in the corner it's worth another look at this pass from Nile Evels he squares up Liam Sutcliffe just there, and then that lovely ball out the back draws in the defender. Simple two on one, and they'll execute those all day long. Tough kick from the sideline for Lytton. The crowd on the far side will give us a good indication of this one as he strikes it. And he's just, just tugged it in front of the near post. So eight points to nil, but Burgess, who had to be patient opening weeks of the season, is in the team now, and he's doing what he does best, scoring tries. Well, Burgess is the try scorer, but Nile Evels, I said he was a confidence player, Nile Evels. He's got a couple of early touches, positive touches, two or three high balls he's taken, then he's got his try opportunity. He becomes a real, real high-level danger for oppositions if he gets involved positively at the start of games, and he's showing as much. Got one. Sue carries it now. Two. Good aggression in defence from Hull. They've been on the end of two really big defeats in the last couple of weeks. After a bright start for the Red and Whites, the pressure building. Oh, oh. Well, this has to be a tidy set. They're halfway through now, two tackles remaining. They cannot afford anything here. Well, the chip over the top. Hoy is back to get it. Skips away from him. He's in a bit of trouble now. Tex Hoy. The chases are coming, and Lewis gets it right on the line. They get underneath him. They can't quite push him back in. Look at that. Moves five, six red and white shirts in there. Well, a confident, a confident Tex Hoy runs towards that ball and takes it on the half volley. It's a side, it's a number of individuals here who are playing without confidence at the moment. Tony Smith's going to find out a lot about his side in the next couple of minutes. They're under massive pressure here. Can they dig themselves out of the hole? Jack Brown is into the action. Good run from McIntosh. They've actually done quite well to get up to the 30. And now... Smith is going to kick low downfield. Evels couldn't quite get there on the full, but he got a beautiful bounce. And he picks it up now. He's thinking about the camera attack. He might not need it. Evels is away. Straight through the middle. Passes inside. Lewis had comes out, but not put down. He's still got some power with it. He's got a hole with it. Lewis won't need it. It's a sensational. Hold down. Try. Evels with a kick return. Mikey Lewis does the rest. He tore. 
He's at it again now. 12 points to nil. Well, Paul K.R. have applied the blonde torch to the black and whites in the opening 20 minutes of this game. We'll start again with the kick return from Nile Evans. Just glides across the field, patient, searches for an opening, but he has options, the entire time he has options. It's a searching, ranging, raking downfield kick. He gets the bounce, but just look, he's just now assessing the defensive line, summing up his options, shows the dummy, Ockham boys, does poorly, finds the ball to Mikey Lewis, and then this is just determination, and all the confidence he took from a stellar 2023 season and an international call-up. And he scores the third try in what has been an utterly dominant opening quarter for the Robins. Well, when the Robins won 22 points in early round one, Willie Peters was not too critical of the attack. He said, look, that will come over the next few weeks and months. That will build. He was happy with the zero on that occasion, but it'll be positively glowing with what he's seen in the opening quarter here. No, oh, Edwards is having a day out, Mark. He's having a real day out. It's his first Hull derby. Started the season on the wing, now gets a crack at his favourite fullback position. And I'll tell you what, he's not letting anybody down. And a third touchline attempt from Jez Litton. See if he's adjusted the angle. Oh, I think the wind just took that away. That was a better strike, a much better strike. They're not from three. We mentioned they had problems in round one with the goal Good kicking. There, but based on what we've seen in the opening 20 minutes here, Jeslitt might be getting a few more shots of goal. No, I don't think it's going to matter, is it? If they carry on playing like they are now, terrible first up defence. But you know, don't underestimate the footwork there and that, that ability to glide from Nile Evans. And then Mikey Lewis gets the legs pumping. All the confidence in the world. High kick well taken. And again, Hull make the tackle but can't wrap up the ball. Money ball live. Rugby league action, including now a Saints wing at 245. Winner goes top. We've got NRL action to come. As well as the remainder of Rivals Round. Warrington Catalan certainly takes the eye tomorrow. Sky Sports action at 255. Robbins up to the 40 again. They're going to go through the rook again. They wanted a penalty. They're not going to get one. Don't forget the verdict. 3.30 on Wednesdays. As Hadley fancies a carry now. He's over the halfway line. Again, it's a quick play of the ball. Lewis is going to hoist it high. Again, Hoy is going to hope this goes dead. And there's just too much on it. And it will be a 20-meter restart. Right, what's the mindset like now, the black and whites? As we've been saying from the very start, no, look, we said it was imperative that they started well. They haven't done that. How do they rescue that? Right, get your big boppers over the advantage line and get them crashing into Hull KR defenders and try and gain some momentum around this rook. They've got to complete a set and put Hull KR in a corner with good, good line speed. You just, you, you concentrate on the next set. The next 30 seconds in front of you, that's all they can do. Yeah, one tackle, one set at a time. Danny Houghton slips the ball away. Lane will carry up to halfway. It's a better run from the black and whites. Kalepi Tanganoa coming into the action for the Robins. Smith finds Jack Brown. He's going to be wrapped up 30 metres away. Chance maybe to put some pressure on the back three here. What can Morgan Smith do? He's going to go straight down the field and Evels will wait. Okay. Catches the ball Dominant. five up. Yes, it's a good chase, John, but from that Stand kind of range, they surely want to get some more pressure on Evans than that. Yeah. You look, it does look a bit laboured, doesn't it? I mean, they've had to do a lot of defending of Hull FC in the opening 20 minutes or so. But everything about it looks laboured. The play, the ball speed is slow. It's not allowed to be fast. There's another way of looking at it. Hull KR dominating the rook area. But I'm still looking. You know, I watched Herman SAS in a Dolphin shirt last year tear up trees. And I'm looking at the side. Is this the same player? Five. This one. And a defensive set. There is Herman SAS. One of the new signings. As May just dribbles the kick down the touchline. It will bobble and Hoy collects it just outside his own 10. But once again, nowhere for him to go. And again, the collision is won by the red and whites. What Tony well, Smith will be players. saying is, look, we score next and kick the goal. We're only one score behind. Two. 
Momentum, momentum can, can change in this game very quickly. We know that. We've both been long, around long enough to, to realise that this is not a foregone conclusion, but it's got to come from somewhere. There's got to be a spark. There's got to be an ignition point for Hull FC. Four. Move, Elias! Back here, mate. Goal for wraps up. There goes SASA. Okay. Five. Move! The hits is against got, some support got around the big man because we know he's got an offload in him. A Smith will kick across field. It's not the best kick. He's caught on the four. And back come the Robins and the tackle made 25. Luis now! Off their own try line. Push forward. Push forward. Got one. Three tries yeah, already. Anybody. If you've just joined us, Evold, Spurgis and Lewis. Two. Move! Back up! Goal two. 15 to go to the break. Four. Three. Move! There from up the chair. Turn back. Goal three. There's the defender on the ground. Hadley, route one. Four. Up towards Move. halfway. What we get? Oh, no, it's Minchella. Gets it to May. Ball over the top. He's on this time. Burgess will collect it this time. He's off down the touchline. Cuts back in. He's got support. He just oh, overruns it. Can he get back Three to his down. feet? No. Last tackle, Stand. didn't force the pass though. Scruffy play of the ball, and in the end, they'll turn it over through an incorrect play of the ball. But that was another chance on that right hand side. Yeah, I think this time, this is uh, there's moments like this where Hull FC can take something from it. They've managed to repel what looked like a really yes, dangerous yeah, attack. Burgess in the backfield, steps inside, loses his footing. Lingy Sau completes the tackle. It's just an incorrect play, the ball. Yeah, there's a little bit. There's a, there's a, a little bit in there from Lingy Sau, but it's the ball carrier's responsibility to play that properly. Black and whites have stopped the immediate flow of points. How can they set about getting some pressure on the line at the other end of the field or moving out to this right hand side? Scott is pushed to the ground. Ockham ball finds Lane. Short pass at the line, and an offload as well. Smith gets it away to SAS, who now moves it wide to Sal. Sal fires the pass out wide to Martin, nowhere for him to go. And once again, the Robins aren't going to refuse a chance to knock down the sitting target on the halfway line. Five, move! Oh, we come down back. Five. Looks around him, Smith, this time will go low. We're going to be good, I think. Fox holds again, gets a decent bounce. Nice first touch, but a decent Three chase. Down. Stand down, look at Black and whites oh, who are just oh. changing their approach there with a the low oh, kick. Two, move, square up. Going to try and limit Hold the goal forward. Goal two. Willie Peters' side are getting as Hall thought about offloading and then stumbles Three. into the tackle. Move down. Now they're lining up to go to that right hand side again. Here's Edels, turns the ball back inside, and they're racing away now to put all of it. And there's going to be another try here. Bachelor is over. His first of the season. And boy, did he enjoy that one. Oh, there's some pushing and shoving now. He's kicking off in goal. Paul oh, not happy about something that happened there. But Bachelor's try extends the Robins lead. There may be a little bit more to come from that post-try Frank in the goal area, but more problems for the black and whites, and at the moment they haven't got the answers. Well, I'll tell you what they should be happy about, how easily they got opened up on that edge. It looked just a, a regulation spread play, but there's a change in tempo there as the referee... Liam Moore has a, a post-try chat, warning perhaps to Mikey Lewis, but it's just this change in tempo that pulls Morgan Smith, and Lingy Sal's not able to close the gap. He could back on the inside, and then Batchelor released to score his first try of the season. Mikey Lewis it is, he goes and uh, a, a petulant pat on the head, I think, for, uh, for Daniel McIntosh, but that's too easy. It's just a simple change in direction. Batchelor on the end of it. And then Mikey Lewis is following it. Mikey Lewis actually gets shoved over by Dan on McIntosh, so it is. It's just a, a retaliatory laugh in his face. Six and two threes there. In fact, you know, you look at that and you go, Dan on McIntosh is the instigator. This is the one thing that Mikey Lewis could potentially do a little bit better. He's such a high-quality player. 
and he, and he, he was full of petulance as a, as a young lad. I've seen a much more mature Mikey Lewis back into 2023, into 2024. He's still there, though, isn't it? Just bubbling underneath the surface. But hey, let's get away from that. Let's get to the positives. Few and far between for Tony Smith, few and far between for Hull FC fans, but I'll tell you what, the Robins are flying. They are. It's another tough assignment from the sideline for Jez Litton. Sends this one low towards the post, and that one too is waved away. So goal kicking a problem, four tries to nil. It's a good job for the black and whites that they can't have the extras at the minute. Yeah, just look at this. Tyrone May to Evels, just drifts across again. Morgan Smith goes with him. Lingy South on the inside, cannot close the gap. Hiku on the inside, that's too easy. That's way, way too easy. That's a decent kick-off. Will they get the bounce? No, they don't. And the Robins will be just saying to Jesley, listen, yeah, he's, he's not from four. They'll be saying to him, listen, hey, don't worry about it. So you just keep you doing your best. We'll keep scoring tries. Well, now a penalty conceded. Laying too much on the ground there. Told to get out of it. And Lewis is eyeing up another deep kick. And another deep kick he produces. Yeah, there's too much Jordan Lane, too much on the run. And those little innocuous moments, they lead to big consequences, don't they? Danny Hound shot out the line there and potentially opened this up play one. Yeah, May held on to it, let Hound run through the line, then passed it behind him. And here they go again with Hadley. 30 away here. Two. Litton. Finds Lewis, finds Minchella. Minchella bumps off one. Still going forward, eventually he's thrown to the ground, 25 away. There's a more punishment incoming. As Litton again jumps out of dummy half. Here's Hiku now, short pass up the middle to Whitbread. Support arriving for Evels, can't quite beat the last man. They bust open on this near side. Here's May now, short pass to Hadley, can't Good reach tackle. out. Last tackle, they've still got numbers to this side. They're going for the power play, and Tangano has put it down. Well, that was a chance gone begging there for Hulk Air. Hey, let's credit, let's credit a good tackle when you see one, though. New Brown saved a try there. That tackle has stopped Dean Hadley crossing for the Robins' fifth try, and then is just not able to take the follow-up. It's a great piece of defensive play that's rescued something there. But what, what's worrying and what, what should be worrying Tony Smith is just how easily Hulk Hull FC are getting opened up with simple changes in direction. The Robins are not throwing... They're not, they're not pre presenting unsolvable puzzles here. They're dropping players back on the inside. They're just not being dealt with. Three. Move, Jazz! Well, now go three. Big eight minutes to go to the break. Offload is picked up by Smith. Four. And he quickly is Move tackled James. by Bachelor. Sixteen nil could have been a lot oh! worse. Release now, five. Last tackle. Goal five. As Houghton gets it away, Smith's going to go five. through hands here. Brown Goal needs five. to find a pass. He just hurls it out the back. It goes back to Smith, who just kicks it. It's a Robins player, and it's fallen upon by Tanganoa. And everything that the Robins Whoa. do at the moment seemingly is going their way. That's just breaking down, isn't it, Full FC? They're starting to try things now and going, I'm sure that's not part of any game plan. But they've been so frustrated by how slick the Robins have been. But I'll say again, you know, this is not grand final stuff. This is simple changes of direction. Hiku, ball just goes astray. Burgess tidies up. They did well there. Burgess didn't panic. Ball three. Great Go shot there. Out. Sutcliffe it was. Stand for. Bachelor on the end of it. Goal four. May now. Five. Hadley over Move. halfway. Last tackle. Hold. Goal five. Oh, to May. He's going to put Hell it yeah, high. Jeff. This is going to be a contest. Robins are giving chase. Hoy does really well. Got off the ground and then he's picked up, pushed back to his 20 metre line. Yeah, he's done his job well there. Eyes on the ball, off the ground, takes the tackle. Lewis Martin Surrender. takes the first guy. I've been impressed. He's one of the Stand. few bright spots, I think, in a black and white shirt this season. The progression of Lewis Martin is a real athlete. Daniel McIntosh off the other wing to try and provide some impetus around the rook. 
Yeah, the youngster that's shown up well is Nick Staley. We were expecting him to play today, but didn't quite make it. The ball works its way across to this near side, but Brown is wrestled to the ground. Every contest at the moment going the way of the red and white as a kick downfield. Nevilds is waiting again. The ball bounces up kindly for him. He runs across the field, outpaces Sal, gets the pass away. But one. the chase was good Move. across the field, and Sutcliffe makes the tackle. But a quick yeah. play of the ball here, and Hiku. Yeah, come on. And he's relishing it in the centre, isn't he? He's having free run of it at the moment. Yeah, I thought he looked. He was signed as a as a fullback. He was promised that number one shirt. I, I always thought he's a better centre. When you saw him play for the North Queens and Cowboys, I thought that's where he excelled. And I think the side looks a lot more well balanced. Move. We've seen the evidence of it, haven't we? Got three. Some have here. Up the middle. There you go. Four. Luckily into the action. Minchella gets it away. May, they've got numbers again. Here's Hiku. Burgess outside it. Burgess down the sideline. Hiku inside. Hiku shows it, doesn't he? And it will stroll in. It's a fifth try of the first half. tries to nail them five different try scorers as well just shows the the variation that Hull KR can offer uh, I mean Hiku's done incredibly well there first of all to get the ball away to Burgess and then be in position to take the return and these are gas looking Hull FC players have had to do an awful lot of defending the defensive line is passive as a result and the likes of Hiku and Evolds and Burgess can just run into some space Nice catch and pass by Evolds. Catch and pass again by Hiku. And again, look, you're creating two on ones and they'll take those all day long. I think there's, a, there's another player, I think, who deserves mention. That's the man who just passed the ball there, Elliot Minchella. I'm such a fan of his. He cleaned up at the awards uh, at the end of 2023, including the player's player. And when you think about the stellar performances of some of the Robins in 2023, you know, Elliot Minchella, player of the year, player's player of the year. That's the one you really want to win. I, I think he's one of the, he's not, not underrated, of course, because he's a, a quality player, but his name often gets overlooked. Will it be lift off for Lytton? In the goal kicking, there is Elliot Minchella at the heart of everything that Hull KR do. The new captain. The roar will tell you everything, and Lytton as though he's just rolled in a pull of the Masters, acknowledges the crowd and makes his way back. 22 points to nil. It's an emphatic first 40 minutes so far from Willie Peters' side. What's the, what's the goal-kicking equivalent of the yips? Well, he's just banished them there. It was the most confident of strikes, but he's gone over and 22 nil. Look, he does nothing more than tell the story of this first half football. It's been utterly one-sided, utterly dominant and utterly in the favour of the home side, the Robins. This is a, a Hull FC side, needed to start well, didn't. Now Franklin Pelle, two yards offside. You know, these are big name signings they've brought in that are just giving up metres and territory and putting the team on the back foot again. Take a look at the possession stats. Take a look at the metres that the Robins have made. An additional 300 metres, the completion rate of 100%. I mean, this is just the perfect, the perfect first 40 minutes. Well, it was 22-0 when these two met in round one at full time. They might better that in the first half here. There's a light offload, and forward go the Robins again. Michella clapping his hands, wants a quick play of the ball. Hadley, a willing runner, offers the dummy, he's chopped down just short of the 10-metre line. They're coming for more points here. They fancy it, Lewis straight up the middle, but he's turned away five out. Two minutes to go to the break. As Lewis is told to get to his feet and play the ball, he will. Minchella now to May, gets it away to Evold, slicing through, looking for that 100 try. But he's denied, and there's another penalty incoming here. The fans reacted on that far side. They didn't like the challenge from Sutcliffe. Tap and go, they will. Minchella turned and 
Luckily, maybe was just in the way, so Minchella will have to take it forward himself. They'd love another one here before the break. A short pass, good defence on the line from Hull, but they need a bit more of that if they're going to hold out the Robins here, and they're going back to that right-hand side. Minchella puts the brakes on, flicks the ball away. There's a Robin waving its headballs, flicks it to Hickel, gets it away! attacking play again nine levels at the heart of it he's just grown in confidence as this half has unfolded and again from a, a stop start set they found an edge and another beautiful ball it's that, that stop and go from Minchella he finds a late offload and look at this from Evels arm out draws in Sutcliffe flick pass again that's such confidence done with such a plumb and Hiku, another try assist, but you look at try involvements, there's one from Minchella with a late offload, here's another from Evolds, stiff arm, ball out the back, Hiku into the space between the two final defenders, and Burgess, well I'll tell you what, if he holds his position, he could end up with four or five this, evening, this afternoon. Pure emotion on players and fans alike. Joe Burgess, second of the afternoon the hoot has gone in the background so this will be the last kick of the first half what a picture that is there's not a lot of talking going on there there's some soul searching to be done tony smith looks quite relaxed but inside he must be boiling they've conceded 50 in the last two games and are over halfway to doing the same again here Litton to add the extras then Litton sends it, oh, he's found his range now. Another two points to the total. 28 points to nil. Tony Smith and Hull FC back their way into the dressing room. Big second half needed for the black and whites. But it's all good for those wearing the red and white. At half time, Hull KR 28, Hull FC nil. Mark John, thank you very much. Deary, deary me. Smiles on the east side of Hull as Hull KR walk off for a well-earned break, having scored six first-half tries against what must be said was a hapless Hull FC performance. What, if anything, can Tony Smith say at halftime? What are the thoughts of John Wilkin and Sam Tompkins? Well, you'll hear them the other side of this break. Yeah, we'll continue our coverage of the NRL here on Sky Sports tomorrow. Queensland Derby with the Titans taking on the Dolphins. 8.35 a.m. Sky Sports Arena for that one. Well, welcome to our Good Friday coverage from the Rivals round. And what a game to start off our doubleheader. Hull KR, Hull FC. What a halftime scoreline we have. Six tries. Two of those converted by Jez Litton. Two Hull KR. Zero for Hull FC. No points. Plenty of problems and plenty for John Wilkin and Sam Tompkins to discuss here pitch side at the Totally Wicked Stadium. Of course, we're building up to the Saints-Wigan game, which will come a little later on. A sold-out Totally Wicked Stadium. A sold-out Sewell group. Craven Park has seen what, Sam? Um, very one-sided half. I think UKR have, have looked slick in attack certainly with Tyrone. Uh, uh, OK, well, we'll, we'll, just, get, we'll just get back to you. Just to what Sam was saying as we switched his microphone. OK, you've got your mic one back sided, on again. One-sided, Sam, one-sided. Yeah. <laughs> 
John, yeah, you, you go ahead. What have you seen? Half, wasn't it? It, was, it was complete destruction from Hull KR. They started the game incredibly efficiently and took Hull FC to pieces. Uh, we spoke about Hull FC's challenges. Well, I'd like to focus really on how great Hull KR were for you 40 minutes. You mentioned pre-game Hull KR's defensive efforts and Willie Peters was building a side on defence. Yeah, it, well, it built your side on anything, build it on defence. And in the opening exchanges in this half, Hull KR's defence was just so tidy. It was so controlled. And off the platform of the defence, it gives you the chance to go and attack. And Contrast it with this defence. Oh, yeah, well, it's just it's just too easy, and it was through the middle, and it's now levels. What a game he's had. But Mikey Lewis, Tyrone May, really threatening all of the time. Tyrone May's loose sort of style suits Hulk KR's broken play. It's everything that's come off for Hulk KR has been around ad-lib play, really. I think the, the two halfbacks were referenced it before the game. That's what they come up with, and they've proved massive problems for, for Hull FC, who, who they're not making it any easier by just coming up with soft defence. Yeah, and the support player from Mikey Lewis, when you're an exciting player who likes to run the ball, Mikey Lewis is always around the action, he's hungry for possession, and he gets the ball there. That's some finish, some strength and balance from him. He still had to break three tries after collecting the ball from the, yeah. from the break. You know, that's, that's very impressive. That shows strength, speed, everything he's got yeah he's a bachelor try and this again it was May it's the left edge of Hull FC that's just come up with nothing all afternoon and they've really struggled to deal with May and that's resulted in not only bachelor scoring tries but Burgess has had a field day out on that edge too and it's Martin and Sutcliffe on that whole left edge who really just struggled to deal with anything that Hull can have thrown them as a result Pet Hickett, well, this is nice, isn't it? It's Mikey Lewis being the antagonist, what we said about the petulance. I, actu I actually think he, he... I don't think he started that one, to be no, fair. Um, but he, he's the man you want to get into. 16-0 became 22-0 with Pet Hickett's try. Again, this edge, torn to shreds. Yeah, just bad timing, defensively disconnected. That's it, it's the disconnect. When you look at a good defensive edge, everybody's moving the same direction. Hull FC look like they've got five blokes on one side of the field, all trying to do their own thing, which is, is never going to work. They're getting offloads with 3-4 in the tackle, some guys coming in, some guys staying out, and it's 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 just providing a massive opportunity every time Hull yeah, attack. Nine levels well, having well, a wild over game. Oh, he's just having one of those red-hot days. You know where things happen, everything you do, do is great. Unbelievable pass with Burgess with an easy finishing the corner but that that Hull KR right edge has been lethal Hull's left edge has been lackluster Hull's performance has been flat and just imagine Jez Litton was kicking that, the <laughs> only positive for Hull FC is that Hull KR don't have a goal kicker yeah. he should be 36 <laughs> should nil by be. this point uh, there is a subplot a subcontext to this game of course it is Tony Smith who this week had come out in the papers in the build up to this game explaining how this was a long-term project and he had a history of being able to turn clubs around which indeed he did Huddersfield, Leeds and Warrington but this will accentuate the pressure on Tony Smith. Oh. If they go on to concede any more points in this game, which looks likely, you would imagine there will be a huge heap of pressure on that coach, no matter what he says. Yeah, I think he, he knows that there's pressure. All FC, regardless what they say externally, have lofty ambitions. They're a club that expects to be there or thereabouts. They're currently not there. Tony Smith's feeling that pressure. And this performance today really doesn't help because it... it it's lacklustre and, and it, it lacked energy and it lacks intensity and it lacks quality. All contrasted, the juxtaposition is Hulk Kaar's performance, which is beautiful. And if you concede, let's say 50 points in a derby match, talk about projects for the fans will go out the window, long-term planning will go out the window. Yeah, this will, this will be the worst loss of the year if they go and concede 50 points. Tony Smith, yeah, he's under pressure. What can he say at half-time to, to tell New Brown to make a one-on-one -on -one tackle? Tell the middles, when there's three of you tackling a whole KR player, don't let him offload. It's the basics that get him wrong. Do you know what I mean? It's, I'm not sure what Tony can say at half-time to make them change well, what they did in that first four. He can't say anything. The game's done. Like, this game's done. It's already in the bin. They can't... Re they, when they review this... Not quite. Not quite. Stay no. tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Well, it is a whole derby, and we have a whole KR side who have put in a magnificent first 40 minutes. Well, it's hard to see a comeback, as you say, John Wilkin, for Hull FC. They will have to rustle up something because the pressure is mounting on the club from the US side of Hull. We've got the second half on the way after this. Under the bronze gaze of one of the greatest ever in rugby league and certainly in St. Helens history, Kieran Cunningham and of course Steve Prescott immortalized here at the Totally Wicked Stadium. The fans of the Saints and Wigan 
have made their way here today for this Good Friday Derby game that is and has been for weeks now an absolute sellout. We'll be bringing you that shortly here on Sky Sports. We'll be building up to a three o'clock kickoff as arguably, arguably the two best sides in the competition clash. Well, just a reminder, we've got the full Easter program here for you on Sky Sports as this year in 2024 we bring you more than ever before every Super League game live tomorrow's doubleheader sees Warrington take on Catalan and will be followed by Salford Lee channels below action and main event for those two will go on action at 2.55pm on Sunday as Rivals Round comes to a close with the Giants travelling south to the capital well, in the east side of Hull, our Good Friday doubleheader has kicked off and in style if you're a Robins fan. Six first half tries, just two of those though converted by Jez Litton has a 28-0 lead going the way of the home side and leaves plenty of questions for Hull FC, their supporters, their coach and their player Sam Tompkins. Yeah, huge questions I thought. Today we spoke about it's an opportunity for Hull FC. First 40 minutes, they've done nothing but confirm the form they've had in the last first five rounds of this year. OK, there is pressure as well, though, on Hull KR to repeat what has been a majestic first 40 minutes performance. Can they do that and heap more pressure on their rivals from the west side of the city? If they can, you'll find out in the company of our commentary team as we return to John Wells and to Mark Wilson. The team's out then for the second half here at Sewell Group Craven Park. 28 points to nil. That's 50 unanswered points this season the Robins have posted against the Black and Whites. Are we in for another record Super League win for the red and white half of Hull? We're about to get underway. Second half underway. Hull KR against Hull FC here. Rivals round on Sky Sports. And John Wells, it's all about the red and whites. Yeah, it is, but I'm going to put the microscope on their opposition, the Black and Whites. I want to look and have a close examination of what this opening set looks like because their ears should be ringing from what's been said in the dressing rooms. Three. We'll have reaction from both camps at the end of this one, but it's going to take some turnaround as Houghton kicks early here. Ball will bounce back, but it's in effect a short kick downfield, so the... Robins are going to start once again a set outside their own 30. Yeah, kick midway through the set. The, the aim there, obviously, if the ball had run on and got inside the 20, a decent kick chase, you know, this would have been a different kettle of fish altogether. Decent contact, though, so two tackles gone, still in their own 40, the Robins. Short of the halfway line now. Be interesting what the reaction is. Will there, we, but will there be one, sorry, from the visitors here? Litton at dummy half. And Chella finds May. Again, they're coming to this side. The ball around the corner. Evelds just couldn't quite take it in. They were bust open again there, Hull, but the pass wasn't quite right. Yeah, two things. One, Hull FC have been rewarded there for a much stouter defensive set. And the second thing is, Willie Peters will be wanting to guard against this. 28 points to nil. He, he, he wants to, you know, there'd be a danger there of him now overplaying, thinking there's going to be a try scoring opportunity in every possession. And that's probably the first example of that. That's something they've got to rein in quickly. Four. Move. The black and whites making their way forward. Let's get some half time reaction then from pit side with Danica Prim. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, Willie Peters actually said he doesn't want the team to get complacent and they want the discipline to stay the same. However, the boys coming out of the Hull FC changing room was very sombre and absolutely silent. OK, quiet. They might be getting noisy here because they almost got a chance. I think Evels lost that in the sun there. Difficult conditions. And Evels not quite sure. They got the look of the bounce there. The Robins were a sombre away dressing room, you, well, you'd expect nothing less. Well, it's not what you want to hear, though, is it? You, uh, if you're a Black and Whites fan watching at home, and there's probably very few of them, the most of them will be will be in here or in a, in a pub somewhere watching this one. We conceded a penalty again, offside. And it'd be one of those Black and White defenders who just stepped in front of the referee and giving the Robins an easy leg up. You talked about stats, didn't you, about numbers, about 
defeats. Well, this is now only the ninth time in 46 derbies in Super League history that Hull Care have posted in excess or, or 28 points. So they're already in rarefied air. Hull conceded 50 at Huddersfield in the Cup, 54 against Lee in the last Super League outing. 28 in arrears here. Well, in round one, the Robins didn't quite kick on second half, but you get the mood, they're in line for some more points here. May moves it across to Evelts. Miss out pass was put down. Martin, if he could have taken that in, and he knows that was a chance, but the youngster just couldn't quite hang on. Yeah, he got himself, did everything else right back, catch the ball, got himself in the right position, anticipated this ball from Niall Evelts. It just came. They've got a stick. They've got a stick in this in these set of circumstances and where Hull FC find themselves. You know, imagine an alternate reality where, where Lewis Martin pouches that. He has got the pace to go the full length. Yes. But instead, the Robins start 20 metres away. And the ball now in the hands of Dean Hadley, who's relishing it up front today. Lytton finds May, May gets it away, big gap, flick pass, good tackle, good scramble there on oh, Lewis, it was Darnell McIntosh, not the first time those have collided today, here now is May, gets it away to Evelds, Evelds puts the brakes on, now he's going back up the middle, looking for that 100th Super League try, but not on this occasion, he won't get it, over on the far side. Ball now comes back centre field, Minchella back to May. Are they going to go to that left hand side? No, they're going to come back to Evans here. They're picking and choosing, they're just offloading. It's like a game of touch and pass for the Robins at the moment. There's no real threat in front of them. Last one, five out. Lytton has got May to his short side, and he's going to have a go himself. Lytton reaches out, and he's just held up a fraction short. It was a probing set from the Robins, wasn't it? Just assessing, seeing if a black and white player had switched off at the other side of the rook and they'd found that all too frequently in the first 40 minutes. But they've got through the first two sets of Hull FC. The, the worrying thing is just off screen, Danny Houghton is down in some discomfort. Oh, no, an error. Look at the reaction. An error from Hull FC. And Danny Houghton, you mentioned it, he's been playing busted, hasn't he? He's really put his body on the line. Danny Houghton, but you get the feeling that his race is run. He's in a world of pain, Danny Houghton. And it was in a, an act of saving a try as well, Jez Lynn from dummy half. And he's really caught something there in the tackle. This is the mistake. Under pressure, Liam Sutcliffe. And there are hands in there, but... The judge to have knocked on into a defending player. And look at the celebrations from the Robins there in no mood either. This is the more concerning scene from a black and white's perspective. They're going to give him all the time they need, but you see the sign there. There's a shake of the head. And the international sign for substitution. And that's the last thing that Tony Smith needs. Well, it His is. warrior leaving the field. It is, but at some point, John, he's got to think about the bigger picture, hasn't he? He's got to say to Danny, look, enough's enough, Danny. You're going to have to go. He's going off, and... You know when he leaves the field, there's a big problem for him and for Hull FC. And he will leave the field. He looks in a great deal of discomfort as well. Hopefully nothing long term. Well, if that's a, if that's a rib, the rib cartilage is clutching okay, at his, his side. Can we get the score, They're please? really painful. You, you can't get your breath. You feel like someone's stuck a poker in your side. Okay. Well, there might be. Another thorn coming into the side of Hull FC here as a ball back on the angle for Opacek. They've not seen much of it on that left-hand side, have they? But they'll be hoping for a bit more ball second half. The ball works its way centre field. Tanganoa is wrapped up five away. First point second half. Are they incoming here? Five out from the line. Hull defending their own line. Litton looking. We'll go to May now. May turns it back here for Hiku. Hiku slices across the field. Again, to be fair to the black and whites, they defend it well enough. But are they setting up a big switch to that left-hand side here? Litton to May to Lewis. Lewis turns into a tackle and gets a shot in the midriff from Jack Brown. 
And this is the fifth tackling coming here. They're going to work it back towards May. May gets it away to Luckley. Luckley back to May. May burrows his way, trying to power to the line. And once again, the Robins are going to turn the ball over right on the whole try line. Good defensive set there. If I'm Willie Peters, I'm, I'm, I'm scratching my head a little bit here. You know how good Tyrone May's Marcus. short kicking game is. And we said to me a couple of minutes ago, there's a danger here of the Robins who concede a penalty now for a high shot. Dean Hadley just snaking high. There was a, there's a concern there from the home team and from, from Willie Peters that they overplay their hand here. They try and score points on every possession. The sensible play there, and Tyrone May will know this when he sees that video review again, just to dribble one in and keep the pressure on. Yeah, it's a high shot. It's a, a careless arm up there from Dean Hadley. I mentioned that performance in round one. They didn't quite kick on. After half time, the Robins, but can they do the same again here as Hull are just trying to throw the ball around here? A stumble, and that's the youngster. Jack Charles is into the action. So he's dad down in the stand at half time. Charles making his way, the teenager. It's a tough environment to be welcomed into Super League. Here goes SASA, better. That's a carry, that's what you're signing for. Well, now Brown is in at dummy half, and here now is Lingy Sau, and Sau gets it away to Sutcliffe, bit of open field for him, tackled by Hiku. Chance though here if they go to the right, and that's where Smith is kicking now, cross field, batted down, that's going to be play on, it's not played up by Rovers, they pick it up, Lewis collects it. Well, that was probably the best attacking set we've seen from LFC. And, and what was the spark? A direct, strong carry from a big Two. forward who they brought in to do Move that job. Back. That's the Come first on. time we've seen SASA over the advantage line today. Three. But also Move now on, New Brown is at dummy half, then that might encourage more direct running. It's Burgess, two tries for him in the first half. Seen a, a triple substitution from Willie Peters. Sue carries it up the middle. Move back. Jez Litton's gone for a breather, so Matt Parcell is into the action. As Lewis kicks, that's charged down, and it's picked up here. This is going to be a try, and Okabor is away, and Okabor will score. First points for Hull FC. It's a first try for the black and white, so Jaden Okabor. And sometimes when you're up against it, you've just got to try hard. He put pressure on the kicker, and he gets his just rewards. Now then, he's gone out of the line. He's applied the pressure on Michael Lewis, who is he, he, he's a, he's a great kicker of ball. He needs time. And what they've done, it was i traced that all back to one carry by Herman SASA, where he got himself over the vantage line, they played off the back of it. All of this position now, and the reason that Michael Lewis is kicking from there, you can trace back to that one carry and how they played off the back of it. Okabar, opportunist, with his charge down. He's a big, rangy bag rower. Is Okabar signed from the Bulldogs in the off-season? He's had a, a, a middling start to life in a black and white shirt, but he gets a try for his troubles there. And the black and whites are off the board. Yeah, Donald McIntosh looking to have the extras here. Yeah, just pick the ones we need to advise by that. If we're managing one of the cameras, there's no response to tackle. The kick is good. 28 points to six. A little bit of joy for those in black and white here at Craven Park this afternoon. Lewis kick charged down. Right, let's get some injury news down at pitch side. Is Danny Capri? Yeah, it's not looking good for Danny Houghton. He's receiving lots of medical attention, and it looks like it is a rib injury. He won't be returning. Okay, so no Danny Houghton. Did look a painful blow for him. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that Hull FC have been here and pulled it out of the fire as they did famously back in 2016, but ooh, that's a high tackle on Charles, and all of a sudden, the Robins just getting a little bit of discipline. Yeah, the, the, well, because they're not able to apply any line speed because the carries have been better, the carries have been more direct, 
you, you can then play on the front foot and a little bit of footwork can cause problems. It can cause problems for the best of you. Can Hull go back to back? Remind us that Helen's Wigan to come. Winner of that one will be top of the Super League tonight. Rock and ball, the try scorer drives forward, they're 25 away. Charles then skips across, short to SASA. Brown in at dummy half. Gets it away to Smith. Smith back on the angle for Sal. A little bit of footwork takes him past two. Flicks the ball away. There could be a chance here. Charles was in support. They didn't find him. Well, they're inside the ten again here. Now they'll go to Charles. Turns it back. Determined carry. All of a sudden, Hull FC got a bit more steel about them in this second half. But have they given themselves too much to do? Lovely pass out wide. Trying to get away. season and Hull FC have given themselves a chance here much to the delight of their travelling fans well a double strike inside five minutes for the black and whites I'll tell you what Jack Charles has had a really good introduction to this second half I've been keeping my eye on him in back play and he's bossing players around senior players and Tony Smith took his time in introducing him into the game but what about this for a pass that's beautiful, cuts out two defenders, and then it's a one-on-one -on -one with Cameron Scott, very strong in the tackle, rides the challenge. And it's Tom Opacic, I think, that he gets over, you know, known for his defensive work, Opacic. And it's a second try in five minutes. And this game's come alive because this, it was looking like a procession, wasn't it? Looking like a parade at half-time. And Cameron Scott, who's had injury worries and injury problems of his own to deal with, He's back in the starting lineup at the expense of the injured Carlos Tumivavi, and he scored what could be a very, very valuable try in the context of this game. Can McIntosh slot the extras from out wide? No, not the best strike. But they are back within three converted tries. Tony Smith, whatever he said at half time, well, there has been a response. And he and he's look and he's. This takes, it takes some courage and some knowledge and a, and, a, and a roll of a dice from a head coach, despite the experience he's got. There's a young kid there with a lot of potential in Jack Charles, and he's gone, do you know what, son, get on there and show us what you can do. Well, he made his debut, we saw the game against London. Came on as a sub there, and Tony Smith said ahead of that one, he's ready, we feel he is ready. Cam Scott's certainly ready. First try of the season for him. Well, there's a bit more purpose, and the black and white fans will want to know where was that purpose in the first half. Yeah, they looked flat, didn't they, for the first 40 minutes. But again, we, we talk about moments in games and how momentum can shift. One or two carries, a little bit more punch in defence, and that changes the complexion of things. Paul okay, Kear have had it very, very easy so far this afternoon. They've had to do very little, they've had to think very little. Now they're getting some shape thrown at them and some determined carries like this from SASA. Yeah. Look at that. Four on him and he still stood there. Last one. They're going to get it away to Smith. Smith's going to run it, gets it wide. So Cliff will roll the kick down the line. Will it bounce kindly for Martin who toe pokes it down past Devils when it's gone into touch? And that will be a turnover of play. But you take those all day long. They're now playing on the front foot on the last tackle. They go for the, the run play. And then Sutcliffe eventually drops it on the toe, just doesn't get the bounce, Lewis Martin. But these, this is much more encouraging signs from a Hull FC perspective. It is. Look, if Hull were to score the next try, then we could have a grandstand finish, but the Robins will have other ideas. And you just go back, you mentioned it, John, when they had those two sets on the line and they just turned the ball over on the line, they didn't ask too many questions. You might need to start asking some more questions now. Well, I think they, they, they fell into that trap thinking points were going to come every time they got into that area of the field. And here's Parcel, jumps out of dummy half. Good work from market defence from Rock and Ball. Here now goes Minchella. Root one still from the Robbins, gets the ball away to Lewis. Thought about throwing it out wide and will opt instead to take the tackle. Charles is on him. Oh, did they lift his leg? Move! Free says play on, get on with it. 
Here now is May. He's going to run it on the last. Dribbles a kick through. Can they get on the end of it? Batchel will hack it further forward. It's picked up, but I think that will still be the turnover. There's another example. Because, again, that wasn't the play, was it? They've, they've had two tries scored against them. The idea behind a, a, a set like this now is a, to consolidate. They still protect an 18-point lead. That, that ball needed to go into the end goal. The, I would imagine there'd be a message coming on very, very sharpish to the ball players in this Robin side saying, listen, get back to plan A, please. Well, he's getting bumped off a couple of times defensively. So let's see. Look to work down the short side with Sutcliffe. Good carry from him, five shy of the halfway line. Martin in at dummy half. All of a sudden, the whole players want to get their hands on the ball. Charles Geist, nice pass. A little bit of room on the far side. They're working their way down with Scott. Another good carry from him. Up to 30 away. Ball back now to Charles, who swings it to Smith, who finds SASA. Gets it away back to Smith. Thinks about the ball over the top, turns it back. It's out, touch that. Went backwards, says the official. Last tackle. New Brown will get it away. They're gonna, well, they're gonna hammer the kick in the touch, and that will say that the Robins will get the ball back. Just over a quarter of the game remaining. Yeah, don't mind that. Don't mind that. It's a good option. It has, you know, they want to slow the pace of this game down. They, they've got the upper hand at the moment of Hull FC. And Tony Smith talking to Jack Ashworth ahead of his return to action. They now get that 10 seconds to set a defensive line. Let's try and slow this rook down, squeeze the meters from Hull, Hull KR. Two. Move up and square. Two. Robins play on their own 20. Hiku carries Three. nine Move. downfield. Hold. Hold. It looked like a stroll. And the bank holiday sunshine in the first half for the red and whites, but they're not having it all their own way. Second half. Hold. Relief. One more score would just calm everything down here. There's a short pass, and now there's a line break. And that's a great run from Sue. Got some ball with him, the big man, still going. So Hoy brings him down. What a carry that was from Sue. So Sue. Quick play of the ball. They're going down the short side here. Lewis can't get the kick away. Hoy collects it. Hoy now has got one man to beat. That man is Minchella. Minchella makes the tackle. Really significant tackle. And they've stolen the ball as well. Minchella, Johnny on the spot. Just played it too quickly. Is that a changing moment in this game? Michella did so well to get that ball. Two bits of brilliance from him. As Batchelor comes forward now. That lifts the crowd here at Craven Park. Ball now works its way in the middle with Staunton. Found game time. Tough to come by this season so far. They're lined up left and right. Parcel jumps out of dummy half, gives it back to Minchella. Minchella looking to offload it, finds Staunton. Staunton tackled. A couple of metres away, last one. May calls for it on the near side. He will get the ball, they move it out wide here. Hiku with a kick forward. Was that played out by Hull? Was it played out? Yes, it was. It's going to be another set of six. Rovers just starting to get... A couple of things going their way. Quarter of the game to go. The Robins are poised. Sue with that great break to set up this passage of plays. Looking to offload. It was on as well momentarily. Parcel was waiting. Now he'll get the ball away short on the run around. Parcel finds the pass. Desperate defense. Is it enough? Is it enough? Charles, I think it is, who's underneath that tackle. Well, he's not the biggest, but he got his body underneath it. And they're held up. They want a quick play of the ball. They're not hanging around here, the Robins. Here's Tyrone May. Evels into the line. Evels tackled by Sutcliffe. Last tackle again. Back-to-back -back sets, and Hull have held out so far. Ball towards May. May will get it away to Lewis. Lewis steps, comes back. Hall is waiting on the wing, little kick in behind, won't get to him, Charles collects it. And Charles is tackled 11 out. Again, the easy option there is just to roll the kick in. Someone needs to get a message out to them. I'll tell you what, Hull FC have been so resilient. That's 12 tackles on the fly they've done defensively. And now they've got willing runners as well.
coming up the middle with Ashworth. High kick is going to be collected by Burgess off the wing. Burgess looking to counter attack. Skips across the field up towards the 40. Trying to work the arm free will take the tackle five short of the halfway. Lewis stands, ponders, and is collected a yard short of halfway. Well, no points yet for the Robins' second half. Three, move! And Tyrone May with the ball in his hands finds Evels back on the inside. Hull FC tackles stick again. Two tackles to go in this set. And they've found something to build on of the black and whites. Here's May, finds Lewis. Lewis back on the angle. It's not quite happening at the moment for the Robins. They've lost that fluidity that they had first half. Last one. Lewis will hoist it. The wind will hold it up. It's a tester. Nobody goes to collect it. And in the end, Hoy happy that the ball just poked to him. So coming up then is St. Helens taking on Wigan. Winner of that one will go top of the Super League tonight. The teams are arriving. We've got all the build-up to that one at the Totally Wicked Stadium straight after this one. What a game that's going to be as well, I'll tell you what. If this one has proven to be a decent hors d'oeuvre, I think Saints Wigan, well, well worth watching. Don't leave your sofa. Yeah, and that, of course, whoever wins that one will go top. Good carry Lingy Sow again. Back ends of sets, just getting themselves on the front foot, buying a little bit of time. Bomb goes up from Morgan. Hall takes it though, has time, skips out the first tackle. Good cover from Dino McIntosh. Yeah, there are the teams across the bottom of your screens now. Now penalty for the Robins. Well, it sets up the weekend beautifully because the winner of that goes top, and then Warrington get their chance tomorrow when they take on the Dragons, all part of Rivals round. Time now becoming an enemy of Hull. They just gave themselves too much to do. They had that flurry. Two tries in four minutes, but not being able to add to it crucially thereafter. There goes Lewis. Wanted a penalty and didn't get one. He thought the markers weren't square. Well, Charles and Lewis going at it. There may be a sign of the future of things to come in this city. Great carry again. Tanganor it is. Minchella, May, drops it back for Hiku. Hiku steps out of one. Had time to offload, but opted to hang on. Right, two tackles left. See how they end this set. This is significant, I think. Well, yeah, they're just going route one up the middle. They say Ryan Hall has not seen much of the ball. He might get some here, because Parcel's going in. Going for it, Parcel tackled to meet sure. Last tackle. Is this the moment they wrap it up? They're trying to burrow their way over. And they're held up over the line. Let go, Mikey. Well, it's not a regulation then to a set. They try to score an opportunity to see. Very, very close from Matt Parcell. It's just Tex Hoy who manages to change the body line so he can't reach out. And then Mikey Lewis, he spotted half or something, but he's very well wrapped up by the black and whites. The issue is they're starting a lot of sets from inside their own tent. Carries one and two are really difficult in these circumstances. Well, let's see, conjure up some magic. And get another try. Sutcliffe drives forward. Move Brown at dummy half. Hits it away. Tackle on Jack Brown. Plays it. Up the middle. SASA trying to find an offload, but luckily claps the ball. And the tackle is made on the halfway line. Charles is going to go to the sky, kicks downfield. Evans is underneath it, will catch this one on the full. But the chase is a decent one. Better second half from Hull, but it's OK starting to play, John, when you're 28 points to nil down, isn't it? Yeah, not, you know, in the wash-up, that'll be, that'll be the first question, I think. You know, why, why did it take? A blooded nose for you to spring into action. You know what this game should mean to you. You know what it means to the city, both sides. It 
it's worth six competition points in the mind of every fan watching today. I don't know it'll get the Robins Release. right back in the mix as Whitbread up the middle. Last one, wants a quick play of the ball, he's going to get one. Parcel will fire it to Lewis. Lewis is going to stand up the kick. McIntosh waits underneath it. He collects it and the Robins collect it. That's better. That's much better from the Robins. And they really compress the defence. Take a look at the, the width of the defence there. Burgess, that's the centre you can see leaving the line. Well, and they're trying to play around them, but it's, it's very difficult, is that? Close the gaps up between the defenders. Give Hull FC nowhere to go. So Cliff has a runner. Lewis makes the tackle. Ten short of the halfway line. Not the best pass from Brown. Collected well. Over on that far side. And this will be the last tackle. 12 to go. 18 the difference. The expected avalanche of points hasn't come. Two players almost went for the same ball. Burgess thought he had a better angle and then Hiku's pass was batted down. Hiku should collect that. Well, he collects his own pass and now he'll look to go forward. He might wish now he'd let Burgess catch the ball. There was just a knockdown, wasn't it? A hand in there from the black and whites, but the kick was a poor one because of the kick pressure applied by Mikey Lewis on young Jack Charles. The kick didn't have any depth. And he gets it away. Headrock's back in the tackle. Actually gets it just short of the halfway line. Here now is Minchella. Ball is offloaded. Now there's a break up the middle. Oh, beautiful pass to Evans. Evans got support and his inside didn't use it. Tackle made. What a bit of play that was from the Robins. That's brilliant from Opacic, but they've still got a chance here. They have. Here's May now. May, ball in one hand. Can he get to an edge? He's done well to hang on to that as he was getting swung round. Set restart for the Robins. Some more danger incoming here for the Black and White's defence. They'll just settle things down here. Ball now to Minchella. Minchella takes it to the line, finds Lewis. Tanganoa steamrollers through. Guy, what a brilliant close season pickup along with Jai Whitbread from the relegated Wakefield Trinity side and Kalepi Tanganoa scores his second Super League try of the season with a typical barnstorming run. He's a ball of energy, isn't he, Kalepi Tanganoa? And the whole KR fans finally celebrate. There is silence, muted silence, at the other end of the, the stadium as Hull FC what fans watch on at what, what could have been after such a bright start from these men in the opening 10 minutes of the second half. But the Robins had weathered the storm, got back in position, and then Kalepi Tanganoa. It all started with this, didn't it? What about this from Opacic? Ball out the back, they're playing with confidence. Evel's assessing the situation. Beats Tex Hoy, takes the tackle of McIntosh. There's a set restart came when Tyro May was held on to for too long. But then Menchello is so important to this attacking setup. Just tips the ball back inside. It's a mismatch in size, isn't it, between Tanganoa and young Jack Charles. But that setup play is brilliant. How many times Elliot Minchella engages that defensive line? And that means players have got to get off quick and move sideways. They lose the hips. They can't apply forward pressure. And Kalepi Tanganoa, as you say, Mark, seals the game, seals the derby, puts another W in the win column in this long standing traditional fixture. And the Robins will go to eight points on the competition ladder. Mikey Lewis on kicking duty. No Jez Litton on the field at the minute. And Lewis strikes that one straight through the middle. Another two points. And any nerves that may have been there is Jez Litton. He might be thinking, I wish I was taking that kick rather than all those off the touchline. He's got white paint all over his boots, hasn't he, for the first half. And Mikey Lewis gets one just to the left of the uprise. That, I think, that lovely change of tempo from Elliot Minchella, engaging the line, and then just shrugged off the attempted tackle from Jack Charles. 
Will that free the shackles for the last few minutes? There is Elliot Minchella. Right. His reputation just continues to grow, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's had some game, hasn't he? We, 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 we think and we look about the best ball playing third teams in the game. Cameron Murray, I, I, I would think of in a South jersey. Over here, you've got Joe Westerman's been doing it for a long time as that link man in the cast of a Tiger shirt. Well, Elliot Minchella uh, is every, every bit as effective for the Robin side. He provides that link, doesn't he, between the genuine ball players out wide. It means they can attack wider channels. Here's May now, support all around him. Evels is hit. And Sal completes the tackle, last one. May will get it across to Lewis, who's just going to hoist it downfield. Hoy's going to have to come into a bit of traffic, gets off the ground. And he's uh, collected. He's actually done reasonably well under the high ball, Tex Hoy, today. He has he's been asked plenty of questions, hasn't he, I think? You know, he's not had many opportunities in open space, and that's because of the, the lack of go-forward for the majority of the game from Hull FC, but his, his defensive work under the high ball has been sound. Yes. Up to the 30. Come Hull. What about Hull then? Huddersfield next weekend, who thumped them in the cup last week, then St Helens, Leeds and Warrington. It's not getting any easier, is it, for the black and whites? There's a ball with Evelds now up towards the 30 meter line and his hall all trying to get to an edge tackle 40 out and there's Taganoa trying to get his head and arms through the tackle will play it just short of the halfway line Parcel well, not the best pass he'll get his own pass and then bounces off one still going take the tackle Lewis to Minchella luckily strong carry from him Five. last one Move. Marcel Five. And get it to May May's gonna run it again Still just fine. overran him momentarily needs to find a pass he does find a pass to Hiku Hiku flick pass to Burgess Burgess down the side that's got Batchelor inside Batchelor's tackle offloads it then it's knocked on by Hiku well they went for it wasn't the plan they played for but almost came up with another try now they're playing with so much confidence aren't they Hiku the latest one with a lovely little ball look, take a look at that one-handed no look pass to Burgess knows where he was but I tell you what's decent scramble this from LFC down on McIntosh across from the other side of the field and snuffs that one out well the whole car fans are giving Tony Smith plenty here we mentioned that run of fixtures coming up John Huddersfield at home who put 50 on them last week then they go to Saints Leeds then they're at Warrington it's there's no sign of it easing up for Hull is it no absolutely not and they've got to look for positives if you if you believe what Tony Smith says that there's patience being afforded him and that this is a long-term project then notwithstanding the error that Hull FC have come up with he, he would point to this second 40 minutes where they've outscored the home side yeah he's just not regained his feet properly before he's played the ball Herman SASA yeah there's a problem though for Tyrone May who's just gone down at the side of play there cheers Martin hand over boys fixed he just got Chris caught when SASA fell over and right? maybe just there. rolled over on him I think Willie Peters is saying, let's get him out of there. So he's going to go off for the last few minutes, Tyrone May. Jez Litton back into the action. Played at half back last week in the absence of Mikey Lewis. So more than accustomed to the role, but here is Lewis now. Is there one more try left in the Robbins? And Chella again into the teeth of the line, finds Whitbread, who was well wrapped up. By SASA. It was Litton now, short pass to Bachelor. Bachelor's 12 away when he's dragged down. Looking now to go centre field is Litton. Litton with a dummy. Attracts defenders, last one. Parcel will find Minchella, who's got Lewis with him. Lewis short to Tanganoa. Tanganoa looking for an offload. He's tackled a metre out. He's done well that time, Jack Charles. They've, they've set up the play for him. They wanted to do it two plays ago. 
and they wanted to get Tanganoa back onto Jack Charles. This time he's come up with a tackle. Oh, look, you, again, you know, the final analysis of this, and, and, and the Robins are going to uh, pick up the competition points and forget that it's a derby. The Robins are sending a message here to the rest of Super League that the, the development last year was just part of a wider progression, both on, on and off the field. They're good to watch, easy on the eye, they look organised, it's a well-balanced side and they're well-coached. Short pass well held by Brown, plays it now. All looking for a late consolation, better carry, big carry, ball breaks through, that could be play on, it is play on, Smith collects it. I thought it was Pele, wasn't it? Not SASA, my apologies. With a big carry there. This is SASA, bumps off one. Can't find an offload on this occasion. Well, this, these are the sort of pictures we expected to see from the start of the game, weren't they? It was ripped out. Six again, they go again. There's another great pass from Charles. It is, and now there could be a chance for Charles. Puts a boot in, out wide, and it's going to be a try. Dropped it. McIntosh has dropped a Derby Day try. Right in front of the Robins faithful, and they let him know about it. Well, well you've got to marvel at the build-up play. John Charles have been put us under some pressure defensively. He finds the ball out of the back, he then stays alive, picks up the return from Cameron Scott, then drops it on the toe. That's great awareness from the young kid. And I think he was going for the, the, the spectacular, wasn't he, Darnell McIntosh there? He just needs to he just needs to ground the ball. But I'll tell you what, if, if, if all FC want fresh impetus next week, they'll do worse than starting Jack Charles again. I think, it, it, yes, it's been a cameo, but it's been a very impressive one. Well, depending on that injury to Danny Houghton, that might have to be the plan. An error from Hull Kingston Rovers. You know, in terms of standout players this afternoon, there's been a number, haven't there? Petter Hick, who's played well, Tyrone May's been a menace. Jez Litton in his two spells has been exceptional. Elliot Minchella we've spoken about. But the, the Betfred player of the match, as chosen by this, the Sky Sports team, really can only be one player, and it's in a red and white shirt. And the award goes to Niall Evels at fullback. I think he's had an absolutely outstanding game. 162 metres carried, and I think he's by my reckoning, had a hand in or scored in every single try by Tanganoas. Well, another error from Hull, and that should do it. Look at the reaction, Evelds in the heart of that celebration as well. An error from Pele, as you just see the ball bubble up there. Well, the game, if we're honest, was over as a contest at the end of that first half for the, a blitz from the Robins. They're going to do the double over their big rivals. And they're right back in the mix. Take a look at those for stats. Three line breaks, and they're clean line breaks, not tackle busts. That's where you go through the line. 162 metres and 24 carries. Uh, they, they, you know, they laud the fullbacks in the NRL, don't they? The Dylan Edwards and the James Tedesco's of the world. Well, I'll tell you what, he's had a game. He's had a, he's had a proper day out today as Nile Edwards. Yes, the fans are counting down here at Craven Park. Pushing and shoving between Ashworth and Parcel at the end of it. Referee steps in but says that will do it. Hull is red and white. Tony Smith, a warm handshake with Peter Hicku. With the pressure on Smith and Hull FC builds. They need to find a win and they need to find a win quickly. But for the Robins, another full house here. And they've been trying to do some fantastic tries in that first half. No joy on the try scoring stakes for Ryan Hall today. Gap Scott got over for one of two consolations for the black and whites. And smiles all round here. And the first part of a rivals round double header. Don't forget Saints Wigan to come. But in the city of Hull, it will be the Red and Whites who celebrate on their Good Friday. They've beaten Hull FC by 34 points to 10.